and I touch the female robot. And while I immediately feel like it's real skin, I feel how cold it is. It unnerves me. I don't know what to do. It suddenly reminds me of the last funeral I went to when I touched Cousin Matilda. Well, that's over. The underground Japanese and Chinese companies in the industry have already figured this out years ago. While America is just now installing warm lady parts on their dolls, Japan and China have already created real human skin, real human muscle, real human bones, real circulatory system, and real warmth on their warbots. Yes, you touch their robots and you not only feel real skin, it's warm and you feel a pulse. Are you scared yet? Australia is scrambling to catch up with China and Japan. In interviews on The Daily Show there, the female interviewer and female psychologist, of course, say, just because we can do it doesn't mean we should. In this case, it seems a thing of jealousy more than anything else, since the male interviewer pointed out that the female toys fit in the nightstand and is accepted socially as a thing, even for married women. None of this is in the U.S. Scratch that. It's in the U.S., but robotics in the U.S. doesn't care about this, because the U.S. robotics is all about that darn Skynet. Would you like your Terminator in T2 or T3 format? Oh, and you must register your Terminator with the local police. Now, we already went over robots having real human skin, real human muscle, real human bones earlier in the series. Go back and watch all the series if you must. But we did not go over how it felt. Even in the U.S., with the fake skin, journalists are freaking out how the cheap dolls, which are around $5,000, feel so real. The reporters are unnerved how they feel, but they do comment that the dolls are cold, like corpses. The adult toy industry in the U.S., while 80 years behind Asia in almost every facet, do have the upgraded skin, meaning it's not just silicon anymore, it's the upgraded version, it's the new skin, and are warming the lady parts. They have also accepted that hyper-realistic humanoid cheap dolls are now the norm, meaning that instead of making their dolls look like cutesy toys, they've gone to them looking perfect human women. They have gotten over the uncanny valley, if you need to look that up, which they all feared since the 70s. But has Japan and China gone too far? If your robot arrives in a box, and you hear a heartbeat, feel a pulse, and hold a warm body with real skin, would you go screaming into the night? Is that too far? Reports of people seeing robots that were human-like walking down the street started a trend of people with cell phones filming their everyday life walking around small towns in Japan and China. The floodgates were open, and it is so pervasive that smart companies started putting out geisha girls dressed like robots to walk around to market their companies and generate business. Sightings of actual robots have all been confiscated. In the U.S., those who had video of them here met with a sad end. I'm not saying the U.S. doesn't have the technology. I'm saying the U.S. keeps the technology hidden. In the U.S., very few trained in robotics field go into the adult toy industry. They're scooped up for the military industrial complex. Not so in Asia. In Asia, car companies dabble in pu publicly seen robotics with tiny robots to not scare people or to keep people safe in case robots are hacked. And just let me break off into that for a second. Honda has publicly stated that they kept all of their robots small, childlike, simply to not scare people, and in case they were in fact hacked, that you could physically overcome them even if you were a woman. 
but the underground adult toy industry in Japan and China scoop up robotics-trained young men to go work for them and make millions. Honda puts out a robot that can play soccer with kids. Other car companies make mechs, giant mechs, larger than human size that a human could fit in. It's all for show and marketing. The real innovation is all underground in Asia. In China, robots seen in public with their owners are frowned upon. The owners are shamed. There is no lobbyist with the government talking about their rights to not be publicly embarrassed. And so, this is all underground. Some companies over there have publicly stated that they feel sorry that China is not so cosmopolitan, or even in Japan. Japan is a, a bit more accepted because Japan has lived with dolls being seen around town, robots seen around town publicly for quite for decades. If you want me to help, help me to go to Japan and China to get real footage, I'm putting together a publicly funded documentary. The cost will be around $50,000. So far, we've got promises of about $1,000. If all of you just donated a bit, it could start. Please thumbs up this video to get the word out. Subscribe to the channel. And I'm doing two series now. Rise of the Robots, where I warn you about things that are bad in the robot industry and this female Japan releases fully functional females series. Keep track of both by subscribing. Thank you all so much.